Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about few Snowflake related interview questions. And in this video, we are going to see what are the most commonly asked interview questions related to the Snowflake Data Warehouse. So before moving ahead, I would recommend all of you to subscribe to my channel for more of such videos. And we can also connect on LinkedIn and I will leave my LinkedIn profile in the description box as well. So let's move ahead with our first question. So this is also, you know, one of the most important and a very basic and very commonly asked like, does Snowflake allow primary keys? You know, now this question can be asked to you in multiple ways. So one question would be, can you enforce primary keys or, uh, you know, can you define primary keys on the tables in Snowflake? So if they ask you something like, you know, can you define primary keys on the table? You will say yes, because yes, we can define primary keys on the Snowflake tables, but can we enforce them? The answer will be no, right? So this is one of the very commonly asked interview question. So, you know, these two questions I have kept side by side. Does Snowflake allow primary keys? Yes, it allows primary keys. It allows you to, uh, you know, uh, define primary keys in the DDL, but it does not enforce them. So can you enforce primary key constraint on Snowflake tables? The answer is straight. No, it does not enforce. So uh, there is only one constraint, which is a not null constraint that can be enforced on Snowflake tables. Apart from that, you cannot enforce any other constraint on Snowflake table. Right, because it is a data warehouse, you know, it is an OLAPS data warehouse, right? It is not an OLTP database, right, which is uh, which enforces these rules. However, it allows you to keep these rules in the DDL so that if there is any system which is trying to, you know, query your tables and it is trying to enforce any relationships using the DDL. So let's say Power BI, if it, if it, if it is trying to do any kind of joins based on the relationships using the DDL, uh, you know, it will be easier. So that's why they allow you to write the constraints in the DDL, but they do not enforce it, right? So Snowflake's primary key constraints are not actually enforced. They are just metadata or they just help you in documenting, you know, the rules so that it can be used by any other system as well. Now, coming on to the next question is, what is the difference between a stage and a table? So Snowflake, if you have watched my previous videos on Snowflake, you would already know that. What is the difference between a stage and a table, right, in Snowflake? So both are different, right? Now, when you talk about a stage, it is nothing but it is a landing zone for your data. So when you are trying to do a copy, right, when you are trying to copy the data, let's say from your S3 bucket or from your blob storage. So this stage acts as a landing zone for the data before it is loaded into your Snowflake target table. It represents a named object. It is just a named object for the temporarily holding the data files, right, while it is being loaded, it loaded into the table so just before loading into the table it acts as, as a landing zone so you can be ensured that yes all your data is properly loaded into the landing zone so if any your any of your security part you can actually manage very well in that particular landing zone itself and then from the landing zone when you're fully assured you can actually load the data into your target table so it acts as a landing zone but when you talk about a table right table is a permanent storage area for your data within snowflake you know it is an actual permanent storage you know once your data is loaded into the into a snowflake table it can be actually queried you can transform that particular data so this is the difference between a stage and a table now the next question is how can you load the data from s3 bucket into snowflake Okay, so it, it also this question also depends on the cloud that you have mentioned, it can be a blob storage as well. But in this particular case, I'm just keeping S3 bucket. So how do you load the data from S3 bucket into Snowflake? So for this, basically, remember, uh, you know, there are two options to do it right now, we are discussing the first option. So to load, a, you know, any kind of file format from an Amazon S3 bucket into a Snowflake table, you need to use a copy into command. 
right so whatever your target table is where you want to copy the data you can simply use copy into that particular table name sql command and you can execute this sql either from your snow sql or from your snowflake web console both of them i have shown in my snowflake tutorials already right similarly you know you can provide multiple settings into this copy into command which you can see on the screen over here copy into employee table from your s3 bucket location your file format your encryption anything of that sort those settings you can actually provide here so this is one part of it so this is you know when you are doing a bulk load using a copy activity now we are assuming here that you have already done the staging part you know there is an external stage in your s3 bucket already and from your s external stage you are uh, you know doing your copy into the target table so this is one way of doing it so there is another way as well which we will talk about in the next uh, question this is also one of the diagram that kind of shows how you can copy the data from your S3 bucket, your data files which are present in the S3 bucket into the target table. You can directly use your copy into command. And also, you can also use an external stage which is, you know, in the S3 bucket, right? From the S3 bucket which is taken from the S3 bucket, that external stage, from there you can actually do the copy into activity as well. So now, the another question is, have you worked on snow pipe and how do we detect the stage files so okay now these are the two questions which comes one after the other so if you say that okay i have worked on snow pipe right so they can ask you questions like okay what is a snow pipe right and how do we detect stage files in the snow pipe now even in the previous question i told you there are two ways right to copy your data from your s3 bucket to the target database now one was the copy act the copy the bulk copy right that we discussed now the the second way is the snow pipe itself right the second way is using the snow pipe also so these are the two ways now if you do not mention snow pipe in the first question this question is going to come after that particular question if you mention snow pipe then probably you know there might be little more questions on the snow pipe itself like how do we detect stage files and all so, assuming that you have worked on snow pipe, right, there are these details that your interviewer would like to hear from you regarding the snow pipe, right. So, snow pipe basically helps you to enable the data loading from files as soon as they are available in stage. So, as soon as, so there's a difference between the bulk copy and the snow pipe, right. So, bulk copy is a one time bulk copy that you're doing. In case of snow pipe, as soon as you know, you have files coming in to into the stage, you know, your snow pipe basically enables the data loading from the files. You know, you can load the data from the files in micro batches. It is not a bulk load like a copy activity. It You can actually load the data in micro batches, you know, within. So basically, as soon as your file has arrived, you can, you know, just execute that particular micro batch. Now, of course, it is different from your copy statements right which are basically used for scheduling the larger batches so that is also that also becomes one of the question okay what is the difference between snow pipe and the normal copy command why do we use snow pipe when we have the copy command right now the data is loaded according to the copy statement defined in the reference pipe so in snow pipe what happens is okay we understand that the data is loaded from the file as soon as they are available in the stage right and how the data is loaded behind the scene it is loaded using the copy statement itself so when you create a pipe in that the copy statement itself will help you to load the data from snow pipe using snow pipe from s3 bucket to your target table now this pipe you know you basically create a pipe you name a pipe you know which is nothing but a snowflake object right it contains nothing but the copy statement which is used by the snow uh, which is used by the snow pipe. Now, the snow pipe uses copy statement itself underneath, right? In this case, what happens is copy statement identifies the source location of the data files, right? The stage, or, you know, whatever your stage is and your target table and all type of data is supported. You know, your semi-structured as well as your, uh, you know, uh, structured data type, both are supported in snow pipe. And there are the two mechanisms for detecting the stage files. Now, how does it know that, okay, in your stage, you know, because this is the major difference between your copy and your snow pipe, right? So how does it even know that, uh, you know, new files have come? So it knows by the two ways. 
वन इज ऑटोमेटिंग स्नो पाइप यूजिंग क्लाउड मैसेजिंग सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इवेंट नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम योर क्लाउड स्टोरेज सो यूजिंग द इवेंट नोटिफिकेशन फ्रॉम द क्लाउड स्टोरेज एंड ऑटोमेटिंग दैट राइट दिस इज वन वे इन विच स्टेज फाइल एक्चुअली नोज दैट योर फाइल हैज अट राइट एंड इट कैन डायरेक्टली डू दी कॉपी यूजिंग दी कॉपी स्टेटमेंट विच आर देयर अंडर नीथ Now, similarly, it can also use your REST endpoints, your Snow Pipe REST endpoints as well. So these are the two ways. Now, the next question is, how can you load historical data files from external stage? So let's say you have an S3 external stage, right? How you can load the historical data files? So let's say I have the data files, uh, you know, uh, one week back. Okay. So how can I load those files? so you can actually do that using an alter pipe command right okay this work is also done by using snow pipe right so we can do it using snowflake snow pipe by using alter pipe refresh command right so this is how the command looks like alter pipe refresh command so whatever your pipe is you say okay alter my pipe and refresh right what do you refresh so you define the time period from where you want to start copying the data right so if you want to start copying the data from a particular point in time you can actually do that using this particular statement and snow pipe simply takes all those files and loads it into the target table but few points to note here is that this particular sql command right can only load data files that were ingested within the last 7 days you cannot say that i want to load the data from past 30 days right that will not happen only last 7 days similarly the sql commands checks the load history from both your pipe and the target table so it will check your target table as well and it will check your pipe as well right so as a result what it will do is it will queue only those files to load that were not already loaded okay so and this is what exactly it is supposed to do as well but it checks both the pipe and the target table so it will queue only those files which are not loaded earlier using any copy command or even the same pipe earlier right because you would have run the pipe also you would have run the snow pipe as well right so it it checks that you have not loaded that file earlier by using copy or the snow pipe so based on this you know you can actually use this alter pipe command to even load historical files which are within the last 7 days so i hope you like this particular video do let me know in the comment sections if you have any doubt and whether you would like to see more more of these videos so do remember to share these videos because and like these videos as well because that is when i will actually know that okay you want more of those more of these videos on the snowflake interview questions as well right so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel